far probably have the widest and most interesting portfolio of uranium projects in the Athabasca Basin. And we have a little sweetener on Cobalt Anga, which we'll talk very briefly about. Uh, we will make some forward-looking statements, so please keep that in mind. Our competitive advantage, if you've talked about everybody else in the Athabasca Basin, is location. Uh, it's a great jurisdiction to be in, low, generally in the low-cost half, and I won't go into oodles of detail about it. Our experience, we have six full-time explorationists on our team. We have eight combined discoveries and develop delineation projects under our belt from our various employers and over 85 years of experience exploring and finding uranium. We have a great portfolio, which we'll talk about, and we have unique knowledge for a new first-of-kind kind, first of kind type of cobalt deposit that no one has ever seen before. So if you're in the uranium investment game, you have multiple options across from grassroots through to actual production. And what you find in the uranium space is that most people are either grassroots or production development. And so if you're in the production development side of things, if as an investor, it's great, there's lower risk, and you move up and down with the price of uranium and whatever technical risk comes along with the development. And as you saw Craig just show, if you're in the grassroots side to make a discovery, things balloon and values increase radically. But you know, with UEX, uh, we're a portfolio company and we span almost the entire breadth of that entire possible investment outcome. When you look at our projects, that's our sweet spot. And while we believe we have three or 10 uranium deposits that can be moved forward into production, we know it won't happen at today's prices. And so our goal is to develop as many deposits to that point about making production decisions as we can while we wait for the price to, to support new development. And when you look at our portfolio of 21 projects, we span across, and we're in the sweet spot, I like to call that mid-stage to resource development project. What that means is we're sitting on holes, literally mineralized holes, that have not ever been followed up on and turned into a deposit, or turned into non a deposit. So we're not looking at that really high-risk grassroots things. We certainly have a lot of things in our portfolio that will help you with grassroots. If you want lots of that, we have tons of it. In fact, find, find people to help us develop those. We're focused in the area in that mid-stage to, to, to development or resource stage projects, where in each one of those projects, we have four or five, and in a hidden case of Hidden Bay, 14 mineralized holes or hot spots that have yet to be followed up. And no other company that you can invest in in the space has that lower risk exploration potential that we have at UX, but yet is based upon resources. So you have that sort of bottom end risk. And we'll move up down with the rating price as well, but also with discovery. So we're going to talk. We don't have a lot of time to talk about our 21 projects, but we'll talk about the things that we're going to look at in our mid-stage portfolio in 2020. So first of all, Christie Lake, nine kilometers on strike from MacArthur River, the only junior with land between the two world's highest grade deposits. We have three deposits there now, we're growing. And what I like about what we're doing here is like that once again, that mid-stage portfolio. We have three deposits, been following a trend for about since we picked up the property in 2017. And in 2017, we made the discovery of the Aurora deposit. And we thought, oh, great, we're on a trend. We're going to keep going, finding more. And we were even more excited when we heard a, a little birdie told us, hey, there's a discovery made just off the property boundary along your trend, somewhere where that star is. And we thought, oh, we're going to make more discoveries by just continuing down the trend. And in 2018, we did exactly that. And we're just surprised completely by the fact that the system died. And we couldn't really explain it until we did work last year and realized on this resistivity survey and realized, ah, looks like the system's offset onto the Aurora North area. Where that blue area is is probably the continuation of the rocks that we see that host the deposits. And so we drilled some holes there last year, three, to find that offset. And we did find the offsetting structure. Not only was the offsetting structure there, it was it has what we call geochemically interesting uranium. If you take one of the any of the old guard uranium people out here in the Athabasca Basin and say, hey, what's an interesting fault structure that you'd want to follow up on? If it had two ppm uranium in it, you'd go, ooh, that's exciting. We're getting ten plus times that in this offsetting structure. And we'll be going back here in uh, in twenty twenty and testing that area up on the north and the blue for the next continuation of the Aurora trend. That we think we have a system that actually does a little bit of a hockey stick there. 
looking over, and not only that, in 2019, we found mineralization on a new area in the property that's never been explored fully, and another resistivity anomalies responding that will follow up on things. While those aren't actually, we consider those to be even bid stage type targets, they're, they're adding to the portfolio. On a cobalt front, we have a first in kind kind of cobalt deposit no one's ever seen before in the Athabasca Basin. We think it's proof that uh, you'll find cobalt nickel deposits in the Athabasca Basin. We had a preliminary resource done it, on it last year when we had a fraction of it done. This past year, we, uh, that orange area was where the resource was in 2018. We've expanded it substantially over to an actually to a known uranium deposit that was nearby. And we think this is proof of concept that cobalt deposits can be found in the basin. And we'll be going back. Well, we know we probably don't have enough to form our first Canada's first primary cobalt deposit, not produced as a byproduct of another deposit or type, like a nickel deposit or a copper deposit. We know we need to find more, and we have. Uh, we've kind of learned a little bit about historical work in the exploration at the Basque Basin. This cobalt, while it comes to the unconformity, its best grades are below 30 meters, below the unconformity, and. In the, most holes drilled in our eastern projects before UX took over didn't even go 30 meters below the unconformity. So we think there's lots of potential to find these hot spots that have never been followed up for cobalt and uranium. So we'll be looking around the West Bear Dome. That little red line is a dome pattern of the rocks that we see at West Bear. And we're going to be focusing on the North Rim here uh, with a drill program that will be starting here later this winter in the Umperville area where, quite frankly, in 1977, without the drilling technology, not even using wireline drilling today, they did make a sniff of a discovery of uranium, and then doing, uh, if you understand the difference between wireline and standard drilling, they tried to drill through and follow up on the down dip direction of that mineralization and couldn't get the holes through. And this hasn't been followed up since 1977. And this is the kind of stuff in our mid-stage portfolio, we have dozens of these that everybody wished they would have. That alteration system continues to the northeast. There's not even a drill hole outside the mineralized zone that's a, in the next kilometer along strike. And yet the signature that we're seeing in the background geochemistry exceeds that than what we're seeing at West Bear when the discovery today. This past November and December, we worked on our Hidden Bay property. We surround two of the world-class uranium deposit operations, Rabbit Lake and, and McLean Lake, as you can see from the map there, focusing right up against the McLean Lake boundary. We couldn't understand, it was really quite, it quite hurts when you have a property that's 50 meters away from a uranium deposit and you can't find the extension on your property. And we couldn't figure out why down that right-hand side on the Sioux Trend that we couldn't find more mineralization because we, we would expect to. We drilled on the telephone fault structure and found sniffs of mineralization that didn't have any strike length that went along the telephone fault. And when we look at the structural scenario, we realized there must be connecting features in an east-northwest direction that haven't been explored for us. So we did a, a radon survey, looked back at the old work pre-culture and found that there are east-west structures in there, or we thought there were. So we went out this past winter or the end of the year here and drilled, and unfortunately I apologize for this because it's impossible to see at scale that makes sense unless you can come in and see it in 3D. We found two of these east-west structures with alteration and chemistry on it, but more importantly we had one that was mineralized and it's 40 meters into the hanging wall where you'd expect to find mineralization on the main regional fault structure. And so what this is does means that everywhere we have, sorry I'll go backwards a little bit, there are five geochemically anomalous holes in that cluster of drill holes, so they all line up on that plane in an east-west direction. So now we have the little red lines on the right-hand side here, sniffs of mineralization over a two and a half kilometer trend where we know there's sniffs of mineralization in east-west structures that we have to follow up on that have strike lengths of, over four, of about 700 meters. This is the kind of stuff that sits in the portfolio of UEX in the mid-stage. These are the things when you look at a mid-stage portfolio that you can see at UEX that you don't get anywhere else. Once again, we're buoyed up by our, our portfolio of assets that are ready for, toward, to move towards development, like at Shea Creek with our partner, Arano. But we also look at Shea Creek and go, ah, we haven't finished drilling it off yet because the bulk of the mineralization you can see from the red box here is found in the blue rock, blue mineralization, which is in the basement below the unconformity. And you can see just looking at it, there are places where they haven't been drilling. The dot blue there, the light blue, it's, because it's not because it's not there, it's because it's not been drilled. So with that, we have our Hayworth Raven project that will move forward when the market demands it. 
but once again, if you're looking at UEX, it's that mid-stage portfolio where you get value for discovery potential that nobody else has, buoyed by the fact that we have a resource base. If you want to know more about us, we're in uh, booth six, uh, 628, excuse me, just around the corner over here. We can show you a little bit more about our projects. With that, I'd like to thank you for your time.